Hello, everyone. You know, a lot of the great orators or presenters or speakers, public speakers, they are great storytellers. I'm just not wired that way. I want to give you the bottom line. I just want to get to the point, cut to the chase. But the good speakers are great storytellers. You know where else you need to tell a good story? In your medical records. That's right. Through the use of ICD-10, the appropriate diagnoses, you are telling a story of a patient's journey through the disease process that you are treating. In this video, I'm going to go over an example of something that I received recently to tell a story that doesn't really tell a good story. And I'm going to share how I typically do it. And you let me know how you do it in the comments below, or maybe there's something else I could be doing that could be done better. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist in Gilbert, Arizona, also your humble host of the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group. If you're watching this on a replay, if you're watching this on YouTube, etc., feel free to leave any comments below or during this live stream. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them, address them as best as we can. Okay, so just like many of you, you get referrals, you get people who leave other practices to come to see you, and you end up with medical records coming from other practices. And you have to wade through them and try to make sense of what has been done in another urology practice. And this is one of the examples that I received this year in 2021 of a patient who has a history of bladder cancer and who came for a second opinion or for evaluation or because the other practice is just unorganized or whatever. The patient didn't get along with the staff, didn't get along with the doctor, whatever it may be. I'm sure their patients pissed off at me from my encounters here in the office. Somehow we don't see eye to eye, whatever the case may be. You have inherited other patients from other practices and you have looked through medical records from another practice before. So this is an example of a patient who had bladder cancer seen in another practice who somehow ended up in my practice. Let me share with you the note, part of the note that I received regarding this patient. So this patient had bladder cancer that was diagnosed in 2019 and now is here in 2021 to see me. And here is the note from another practice that was documented this year in 2021. Okay, so let me share this with you. All right, so you're looking at the assessment and plan and the ICD-10 bladder tumor D49.4 is listed right there above. Now in my electronic health records, I have the ability to write or, or document in an area called patient story, which is kind of like the history of the patient relative to that particular diagnosis. So you're, first of all, I'm looking at this bladder tumor. I'm thinking, wow, the patient actually has a bladder tumor for, for, whom you're, for which you're seeing the patient on this encounter in which you're documenting. So I read on. Bladder tumor was found apparently on cystoscopy in June of 2019. So keep in mind, this is a medical record in 2021 and it's still indicating that the patient has a bladder tumor. And you read on, it basically went through the workup about the CT urogram, how the patient had a procedure, removed the tumor, showed the tumor, pathology was reviewed with the patient, options discussed, BCG, etc. how the patient did after the BCG, and how the patient's on surveillance cystoscopy, and it states under bladder tumor, flex cysto done today, negative for recurrent lesions, moderately obstructive prostate. The plan for that bladder tumor is flexible cystoscopy in three to four months. Based on what I've read, there has not been a bladder tumor since June of 2019. So the question is, why is there an ICD-10 of bladder tumor when there's no 
bladder tumor before the cystoscopy, nor there is bladder tumor after the cystoscopy today? That is the question. So I would, I would say that bladder tumor will probably not be the best diagnosis to use as the reason for cystoscopy for surveillance as the reason for surveillance cystoscopy today. Bladder tumor would not be the diagnosis that I would use because there was no evidence of bladder tumor before the patient came in today. That is, not, that is actually not the reason why the patient came in today for his cystoscopy or her cystoscopy, her, his in this case, because of the prostate. So there's there's no bladder tumor. There's That is not the reason why the patient came in today for cystoscopy. And at the end of the cystoscopy today, there is no finding of a bladder tumor. So why is bladder tumor being used as the diagnosis for cystoscopy, right? It does not make sense. If you read on to the second ICD-10, it says urothelial carcinoma, C68.9 assessment, had a TURBT in June of 2019, pathology discussed, shows low-grade bladder cancer with moderate inflammation. The plan, today's plan, is to order a CT abdomen and pelvis with and without contrast and to follow up in one to two weeks. Which makes sense, right? You, you perform a surveillance cystoscopy on a guy who had bladder cancer, low-grade cancer, and now you're worried, you, you want to consider following up with a repeat CT urogram. Makes sense, right? Reasonable, not unexpected. So this is, I bet this is what happened. This guy was diagnosed with bladder cancer in June of 2019, came in for surveillance cystoscopy, and now the urologist is ordering a CT urogram to follow up the upper tract to make sure there's no recurrence, even though currently there's no evidence of recurrence. We don't know if the patient complained of grossy materia or dysuria or anything like that because it's not documented. So the patient came in for surveillance cystoscopy, and now you want to order a CT urogram to follow up the upper tracts. So I bet that's what happened. But you look at this, right? You look at this diagnosis of bladder tumor and urothelial carcinoma when the documentation in the chart says, flex cysto done today, negative for recurrent lesions. When there's no bladder tumor before or after you perform the cystoscopy, I think it probably is a good idea not to use bladder tumor as the diagnosis that's the reason for cystoscopy because that that is clearly not why you did the cystoscopy. Urothelial carcinoma, that's the other diagnosis that's used. Urothelial carcinoma, well, where, right? Bladder cancer could be, you know, there's, there are more specific ICD-10s to specify where the tumor is located. You could, you could specify anterior wall. So let me look this up right now. You can look at the assessment and plan. You can look at uh, cancers. You can look at bladder cancer. You have, sorry, cancers, bladder, bladder cancer. You have bladder cancer. You have bladder cancer of the, let me delete that. Cancer of the anterior wall of the urinary bladder, cancer of the dome, cancer of the lateral wall, posterior wall, trigone, right? cancer of the bladder and neck, you have multiple diagnoses from which to choose to be specific relative to the location of the bladder cancer. Instead of just a generic urothelial carcinoma C68.9, right? That is not, it, that does not provide sufficient specificity when it comes to ICD-10. If you want to use if you want to do it right, you need to be as specific as possible when you are doing, when you're trying to document ICD-10. So first of all, I would not use bladder tumor as the reason or as a diagnosis for cystoscopy. I would use instead personal history of bladder cancer based on what I see, what I'm reading in this chart. This is basically a patient who had bladder cancer, has been resected, 
and now comes in for surveillance cystoscopy, which show no cancer, and now you are ordering a CT urogram. I would not use bladder tumor as the diagnosis to justify why I'm doing a cystoscopy. Instead, I would use personal history of bladder cancer, and I would use cystoscopy 52000. I would put cystoscopy under personal history of bladder cancer, and that is the reason I'm performing the cystoscopy and ordering the urine cytology today. In addition, instead of urothelial carcinoma as the reason to order a CT urogram, because you already took care of the tumor, you already took care of the cancer, the mass is already gone, bladder tumor is already gone, urothelial carcinoma was the initial diagnosis back in 2019, and now there's no recurrence of bladder cancer, you are doing surveillance cystoscopy, so urothelial carcinoma, number one, it's not specific enough, and number two, it's wrong. So the better diagnosis, in my opinion, would be personal history of bladder cancer, Z85.51. Once you cure the patient of bladder cancer, once the bladder cancer is gone, you resected it, there's no recurrence, you should be using personal history of bladder cancer. You're, you're telling a story of initially you had a bladder tumor, you took it out, and now the tumor is gone. The, now you make the diagnosis. So on the so say, this is usually the progression. You you find a tumor. So now in your assessment plan, you will say bladder tumor, under which you would say schedule for TURBT with immediate postoperative intravesical myelomycin C. Maybe order a chest X-ray, pre-op labs, etc. So that would be the diagnosis initially. Say you take the patient to the OR. You perform the procedure, you document TURBT, you specify the size of the tumor, of course, right? Like a good urologist, you, you help out your coders and billers by specifying the size of the tumor that you resected because in bladder cancer, bladder tumor resection, size matters. So you do the TURBT, the diagnosis is bladder tumor. Say the patient comes back for follow-up, you now have the pathology, now it shows bladder cancer. Now, based on where you perform the resection, now you can document bladder cancer is at the anterior wall, at the dome, posterior wall, lateral wall. You use the specific diagnosis for that visit now that you've done the resection. You no longer use the bladder tumor. You, what you can do is you can, you can document bladder tumor and then in your EHR say that it's resolved, it's gone, okay? No more bladder tumor. And so now the new diagnosis will be bladder cancer, and you specify the location of the cancer. And then say you you low-grade cancer, you, you do BCG, you order the BCG, and the patient undergoes BCG, now comes in for surveillance cystoscopy, and now it's, now it's this thing right here, right? So the patient comes in for BCG, or comes in for surveillance cystoscopy, and you don't find any cancer, and now you want to order a CT urogram. So you now should be should be using personal history of bladder cancer because you've already cured the patient of the bladder cancer. You see how it went from bladder tumor to bladder cancer to personal history of bladder cancer. It's not, you don't keep using the same diagnosis code throughout the entire care of the patient when you already took care of the problem. This is this is not good documentation in that you you need to tell a story because if you are in an, a, say an accountable care organization or if some outside entity is looking at how you are actually performing, right? They are trying to follow your, your patient's progress and if the bladder tumor never goes away, really, what are you doing? Are you doing a good job, right? What about this, this bladder cancer, that urothelial carcinoma? If you took care of the cancer, you need to let everybody know that, hey, you know what? I'm the hero, I took care of the cancer. It's personal history of bladder cancer. It's no longer urothelial carcinoma. You cure the cancer until it recurs, right? Until it recurs. If it, if it recurs, then you can write down either bladder tumor or you can write down bladder cancer, posterior wall, anterior wall, wherever it is, and document that as a working diagnosis, assuming that it's a recurrence. So I digress. You need to be using personal history of 
bladder cancer in this case, in this situation, because you already took care of the cancer, you resected it, there's no recurrence on surveillance cystoscopy. So the reason that you are performing the surveillance cystoscopy is personal history of bladder cancer and not bladder tumor. And the reason you're ordering the surveillance CT urogram is personal history of bladder cancer and not bladder or urothelial carcinoma in, as, as documented in here, okay? Storytelling using ICD-10 is important. It, it makes sense for the person who's following up, who's trying to figure out, like for instance, I received this chart and I'm trying to make sense out of it. It should, that the ICD-10s are like the title heads, the chapters. It should tell me what is going on in this chapter with this patient. And if the cancer has been cured, you want to document that, hey, you know what? Personal history of bladder cancer. So let me tell you how, let me show you how I would do it. And uh, I'll show you this assessment and plan. This is straight out of my electronic health records using a dummy patient. I would document personal history of bladder cancer, cystoscopy, urine cytology under personal history of bladder cancer, and that will be the diagnosis. And you know, you typically these patients have a history of tobacco use. If you want, you can add that diagnosis on top of personal history of bladder cancer as justification for cystoscopy and urine cytology. You don't have to, but you can. For the CT urogram that I may be ordering as part of the surveillance, I will put that under personal history of bladder cancer. So if you see on the screen here, CT urogram 74400, it is under personal history of bladder cancer. And I can also document that, hey, there's a history of tobacco use. And that could be another reason why the CT urogram is justified. So if you look at the actual order, if I click on CT urogram, in my EHR, I have a tab that, that says additional diagnoses. And if I click on that tab, what I can, I'm showing you here, I can, what I can do is I can take the, the diagnosis that is listed in assessment and plan and bring that as a selected diagnosis as part of the reason to justify why I'm ordering a CT urogram. You can also, if, you, if, there's a, if there's a personal, if there's a family history of bladder cancer, hey, you can use that too. Or exposure to chemicals, you can use that as a diagnosis if appropriate, when relevant, right? You don't just... You don't just use urothelial carcinoma as the diagnosis because that is just simply not correct. You already cured the patient. There's no more urothelial carcinoma, but there is a personal history of bladder cancer. Okay, so order number, you would use this secondary diagnosis to justify why you're ordering the CT urogram. And that's part of the reason why I don't, I don't really get bothered by these requests, too many requests for imaging pushback from, from, from payers, I simply don't have to deal with these things because I put in every potential reasonable contributing factor as to why I'm ordering a particular advanced imaging test. You may think, well, who cares? I still get it through. Somebody else is doing the work. Well, if you want your staff to be efficient, number one, you probably want to help them out by putting in as many of the contributory relevant diagnoses as to why you're ordering a particular test. Secondly, when appropriate use criteria, even though you know Medicare's appropriate use criteria program is currently just you're supposed to voluntarily do it. It is not you're not going to be penalized until January first, twenty twenty three, or January first, the year after the end of the public health emergency. It would behoove you to get in the good habit of documenting the appropriate and relevant diagnoses as to why you're ordering a test and why you're performing a particular procedure in the office or in the operating room. So keep that in mind, all right? So here's the secondary diagnosis that I used. And what does the, if I were to print out the document, if I were to print out the order form for that particular test, this is a, a, a snippet, not the entire screen, but just part of what the order sheet would look like. If you were to print this out and order it and send it to an imaging center, this is what it would look like 
under the radiology section. If you look at look at it here in this box, it says radiology ordered, CT urogram, and also the CPT code to help the to help your your fellow radiologists and in, in the radi imaging center. And under that, you will see in in yellow highlight diagnosis or indications. Number one, personal history of bladder cancer Z eighty five point five one and history of tobacco use. So you are giving the radiologist and the imaging center two different diagnoses that are relevant to this patient as to why you're ordering a CT urogram. So it's all about storytelling when it comes to documenting your patient's encounters, especially when it comes to cancers. You can talk about bladder cancer. You can talk about kidney cancer. You can talk about bladder cancer. It's the same thing. It could be, you know, for kidney cancer, it could be gross hematuria, which ends up being a renal mass that you found on the workup for gross hematuria. So see how the diagnosis changes from a gross hematuria to renal mass. And then now, after you take out the tumor, you do a biopsy, whatever it may be, you come up with the diagnosis of kidney cancer. So you're going from hematuria, gross hematuria, to renal mass, to kidney cancer, and you don't keep carrying the prior diagnoses throughout the entire patient's journey. You get rid of the gross hematuria of his resolves if you cure, if you took care of it, maybe you embolize the tumor, I don't know. So if the gross hematuria is gone, you get rid of the gross hematuria. If the kidney mass has been treated, you get rid of the kidney mass, you no longer carry that in your EHR, in your documentation. You carry on kidney cancer. And say, if you take care of the kidney cancer, guess what? That diagnosis goes away. You substitute it with personal history of kidney cancer. So that is typically the progression of documentation of how you tell a story using ICD-10 when you take care of your patients. Let me know how you guys are doing. If you are doing what I'm talking about or you think I'm just full of it, and if you're a coder or biller, let me know what you think about the scenario and an example. And if you are, I know some of you are, I know some of you who work in the practice and you probably recognize the documentation and the EHR, the, the, the folks who are in the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group, you know your docs are doing this type of documentation. Now that I've hopefully pointed this out, hopefully you can persuade them to join this group. I tried, I've invited them but they won't join, but that's okay. Consider telling a better story, doing a better job at documentation, because we, unfortunately in this third-party payer scheme, we are judged by our performance. And if you never took care of the patient's bladder tumor, if you never cure the patient of urothelial carcinoma, really, in the eyes of the auditor who, do, who are not going to take the time to read through your entire chart and request your, your chart all the time, in those auditors who look at it from a 30,000 foot view and just looking at the diagnoses, how good of a job are you doing? So storytelling through ICD-10 is very, very important for accountability, for your performance review, for ACO, and it may come into play in future payment models. For instance, pay for performance, right? How good is your performance if you never get rid of the bladder tumor according to your documentation? How good is your performance if you never cure the patient of the urothelial carcinoma, right? It's all it all comes down to documentation, appropriate documentation, correct documentation, and if you want to continue to participate in this third-party payer game, sorry folks, Got to play by the rules. All right, questions, comments, hate mail, send them below. I look forward to hearing from you. Take care. Bye-bye.